Particle accelerators have started to make their way into modern day life from the CERNs, that's the European Organization for Nuclear Research Particle Accelerator, to the cathode ray tube, or CRT-TV. In principle, a particle accelerator uses electromagnetic fields to accelerate a projectile to mind-boggling speeds. In this video, we will be looking at two forms of particle accelerators, the coil gun and the rail gun. Both have the same objective, to fire a projectile only using electricity. The coil gun is, in principle, a coil of wire and a ferromagnetic core for the projectile, or a solenoid. But instead of using a battery that delivers a relatively slow electric pulse, a capacitor is used to deliver a strong electric current, producing a magnetic field to attract the ferromagnetic bullet, and a short enough pulse to turn off before the bullet reaches the middle of the coil, where the opposing magnetic field would cancel out the attraction, causing the bullet to stop. Then the next coil activates, attracting a bullet further, and then the next, depending on how many coils there are. The momentum the bullet now has carries it through the barrel and sends it flying off to its target at very high speeds. There are a number of ways to get the coils to turn off in time, but the most efficient way is to use a logic circuit, which is a very simple computer to time the activation of the coils. Now to the physics behind all this. The principle we are working with is the right hand grip rule, which states that a current flowing down a current carrying conductor from right to left, the magnetic field will be in a clockwise direction. Using this rule, you can then wind a current carrying conductor around a non-conducting material, a plastic tube for example, and presto, the magnetic fields of all the current carrying loops are in line. This then has the magnetic properties of a bar magnet, and as we all know, a bar magnet attracts a piece of magnetic material to itself. So when the coils are turned on in the right sequence and at the right time, you get a piece of metal flying out one end very quickly. Why a capacitor is used instead of a normal power source is because high amperage is needed to make a strong magnetic field. The higher the current, the greater the magnetic field. This is why large capacitors are used to deliver the greatest magnetic field. This is also why there is no limit, at least theoretically, to how fast and how big of a projectile that can be launched. This is also why it is impossible to calculate the maximum efficiency of a coil gun, because each variable can be changed indefinitely each way. The capacitor can be an infinite size, there can be an infinite amount of turns in the coil, and an infinite projectile size, and an infinite number of coils. This is why most coil guns are very efficient transfer of energy wise because it is by definition a mathematical impossibility to calculate the perfect combination for maximum efficiency. Now we will move on to another form of particle accelerator, the rail gun. The rail gun works on a similar principle, but instead of using coils to attract a piece of ferromagnetic material, it uses two bars of conducting material, usually copper, and Lorentz's law to propel the projectile out of the barrel. Lorentz's law, i.e. the right hand thumb rule, says that the thumb pointing in the direction of the conventional current, a positive charge, the fingers of the right hand pointing in the direction of the magnetic field, and the palm of the hand gives the direction of the force. Rail guns have a more complicated design, but the basic components are the body, held together with lots of bolts so it doesn't fly apart, then there are the rails that conduct electricity making the magnetic field, insulators to stop the rails from shorting out on the body, Teflon rails acting as insulators and as low friction surfaces, the gas injector and adapter with a solenoid trigger uses a compressed gas tank at about 500 psi for this size rail gun to kick start the projectile on its way before it is accelerated by the magnetic fields. Then there are the capacitors to give a high amperage current to make a strong magnetic field around the bars. What happens is the projectile has an armature casing that is used to complete the circuit. Then because of Lorentz's law, the projectile is moved forward until they leave the barrel and the way that it is designed, the armature flies into pieces, leaving the main projectile to speed away to its target. Some small rail guns uh, use the projectile to complete the circuit, saving on costs, but can wear out the rails quicker. Because of its speed and momentum, there is no need for a warhead, but instead to inflict damage to large area, the projectile would break into thousands of ball bearing like pieces and have an effect like a shotgun. Where railguns have an advantage over core guns is the speeds that they can actually reach. 
This is the Navy testing their railgun design. They used a 3 kilo projectile and 10.64 megajoules of energy, accelerating the projectile to just under 2500 meters per second, or Mark 7.344. That's over seven times the speed of sound. Sander National Laboratories accelerated a 0.1 of a gram projectile to 16,000 meters per second, or Mark 47. The US Defense Force also has another railgun that accelerated a 1.6 kilogram projectile to 3,300 meters a second. Railguns also have another potential other than the use in warfare. NASA is doing research to use railgun technology to launch cargo into space, which is a much cheaper option than using rockets. The main problem they are now trying to overcome is wear on the rails.